Hello everyone, Navin this side from Retna Chama Photography. I'm an NPS photographer based in New Delhi and I'm making a video today on this camera. I call it a DSLR killer. I'll tell you why. So basically this is Nikon Z6 II. I own two of these. I bought them like long back. Soon after they got released from Nikon, you know, I decided to make a video on this camera because, um, you know, this is kind of a workhorse for me. I love this so much that I've been using it for everything. So basically, I, I do weddings, I do sports, I do events, I do fashion. This body, this Z6 II, which I have in my hand right now, this has never let me down. Be it the performance, be it its ruggedness. So in, in this particular video, I'll be majorly talking about few features which I've particularly loved. I would say Nikon is actually listening to its users. By the, by the time they launched their Z6 series, Everyone was complaining about the dual card slot. Like everyone wanted that and you know, with the launch of Z6 II, we have it in this. In my case, I particularly feel that, you know, I love shooting in XKD, though it's like a bit expensive, but the kind of speeds it gives us is something which is worth the money. I would say Z6 II is like a benchmark. Z6 was a benchmark though. But I think with the kind of updates the company has given in this camera and the kind of future proofing the company has done into this camera, like you can update it through an app, the kind of buffer speed it has, it is almost three times which we had in Z6 II. That was one of the biggest reasons I had shifted to the Z6 II because you know when I'm shooting cricket, when I'm shooting you know basketball or volleyball or things like that, I really need speed and buffer is something which is much 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 more important than your fps though the fps of z6 was still this has got 14 which is again a benchmark figure like it, it is actually competing with d5 and d6 series and trust me when i first started using z6 in my sports i was kind of skeptical because you know the kind of bodies i had used the d5 d6 and all that the kind of gripping you get the kind of movement you get to do with a 500 or a 600 mm lens it's like mind-boggling but with this cameras these are so small these are so handy but company has actually taken care of the gripping i think i've seen you know other brands as well i've used them too and i can vouch on it you won't be getting such amazing gripping on such a small mirrorless body nikon has really taken care about it with z6 II, they have updated and refined the autofocus the eye autofocus so much that you know you you'll end up not missing any eye focus shot at all when z6 II came in the market everyone was like really expecting about and was really interested to know about the kind of updates the company had done about the autofocusing and um, i think with the autofocus i would say uh, there's something which i particularly love though it has like animal eye focusing it has like uh, you know face eye detection and everything but there's something in particular which I particularly love. It's like wide area autofocus. In the wide area autofocus, you get to see a white box on your screen and wherever you put it, it'll just start tracking the eyes of the subject, be it an animal or be it a human figure. And that is something which I really love about this camera. The autofocusing updates which the company has done in this camera is like worth spending on because I particularly feel that an autofocus photograph is as good as useless. When I compare the viewfinder of both of these cameras, like my Z6 and Z6 II, I somehow hated something about the Z6 and that is the EVs, the, the viewfinder's refresh rate and the blackout time. Uh, because, you know, mo most of the times I'm usually shooting with two cameras and, you know, when both of them are hanging on the other sides, what happens is when you are not shooting, the camera goes into the sleep mode. Though you can just increase the time of, you can just set the timings for everything inside it. But you know, when, when I had to take a shot, like really in a really fast paced environment, this EV of Z6 series, the Z6 camera I'm talking about, it usually used to take like some milliseconds. I, uh, I don't know how much seconds, but some milliseconds to, you know, just pop up. But with Z6 II, it's like, it's like as good as the Penta Prism viewfinder. Uh, it just doesn't take any time. The refresh rate is amazing. There is no blackout at all. Though it was a really small time, like few milliseconds. But sometimes when we are shooting in action paced situations, those few milliseconds actually makes or breaks your shot. Why I'm saying so is because in those milliseconds, you are actually composing your picture. And when that time gets wasted, you end up getting nothing. 
when it comes to videos it has good image stabilization and having good image stabilization in 4k is like something i am really interested in why i'm telling you that is because i've been shooting a lot of interviews and usually most of the interviews these days which we are shooting are in 4k so that you know we get a lot of space to do some cropping if needed but something which i don't like about this is like it has got 30 minute cut off time if you are shooting a video you have to cut it before 30 minutes or it will automatically get cut off and this is something which i don't like because there were situations in past when we were shooting on a multi camera setup on Z6 II and even the Z6 was there and uh, you know we really wanted something if if this could have been made better like if the cut cut off time would have been better it could have been better for us as far as the battery capabilities are concerned when it comes to video i have particularly tested my camera with the supplied battery and the video output which i had got was around 1 hour 33 minutes to be precise and surprisingly the camera didn't heat up that was quite a good pointer for me because some of the brands out there they really do have heating issues especially when you are shooting on 4k and surprisingly when i tested my camera body i got 1 hour 33 minutes of footage the battery died but the camera didn't heat up at all in my opinion z62 is affordable capable it's an overall package and why i'm saying so is because it has got great focus dual card slot tilting screen the vertical tilt screens is there but i would have really preferred to have a you know the fully articulating screen it would be a great add on if the company is actually looking forward to launch a better version out there not just that it has got great dynamic range the weather ceiling is amazing and that is the whole reason i call it a dslr killer